and global thought leader in the employee recognition industry. Today uh, is a great day. So he's going to give us a, a, a webinar today, and he is going to talk to us about what great leaders want to know about recognition. Um, Roy is the author of many articles and books, including his latest, Practicing Recognition, the first in his series of practical and strategic books on giving employee recognition the right way. Roy is a, con a regular contributor to Training Magazine and Incentive Magazine and was chosen as one of the 25 most influential people in the incentive industry. As one of the world's foremost thought leaders in the employee recognition and engagement space, Roy consults and educates leaders and uh, employee workforces and companies and governments and associations around the world. But today, as I said, he's gonna share with us a great topic, what great leaders want to know about recognition. And I would also add in there a little subtitle, but may not know who to ask. Mm -hmm. We are gonna solve that problem today. My friend Roy Saunderson is going to lead us through that journey. But first, just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, if you have any questions, please submit them using your button on the left side of your screen. I'll collect those as uh, Roy shares with us the webinar. And uh, at the end, I'll come back and perhaps ask him a, a question or two. So don't be shy. This is your chance to get some really, really good uh, uh, information from one of the world's most leading thought leaders on the recognition and engagement space. So before, uh, before I uh, hand it over to Roy, uh, just to say we hope you're all staying safe with this pandemic and uh, that you are treating your employees kindly, that you are just making sure that they have the uh, coping skills they need. If you need any help with that at all, you know, also visit us at rudo.com uh, and we might be able to help you with that as well. So without further ado, my friend, Roy Anderson. Thanks very much, Tommy Lee. It's good to be with everyone again for another webinar. And it was kind of interesting looking at this topic uh, about what great leaders want to know about recognition. And I think it's important to understand that there's a difference between leaders and great leaders. And this is what the great leaders want to know. And I'm gonna share um, some thoughts with you on that. But as you know, I always like to kind of set the stage. and. So what, what do your leaders ask you? And, and this might be something that you want to uh, put in the chat section to ask your question. Um, you know, does employee recognition really make a difference? Uh, are these some of the questions you might get asked? And uh, how are you, our managers doing at recognizing employees? They wanna know that. I think many of them do. And Obviously, when we do those employee engagement surveys, they're going to ask, you know, why are we at the levels that we are? Why is the recognition related statements or questions on the survey scoring at the level that they are, whether that be good or bad? And they want you to ask, answer them. They want to know the answer uh, about how recognition uh, can drive performance. These are the things that they are concerned about and uh, want to know uh, how recognition can make a difference. So what are some of the things you can tell your leaders about recognition? What are the things they need to know that you can tell them? Let's have a look. Well, first off, I think it's very important that you know that these leaders are in the positions they're in because they have the ability, the skills, the knowledge, experience to run a business and make a profit, create wonderful products and services. And so for them, you know, probably point number one is they want to know what the bottom line impact is of recognition. They want to know probably in three areas. They want to know the people impact. They want to know how recognition is uh, keeping the morale level up. How are we helping our employees feel valued for the work they do and the contributions that they're making? Uh, do they feel appreciated? It's interesting that question gets asked on engagement surveys all the time. You know, do you feel valued and appreciated for the contributions you make on the job? We, we ask those feel questions 
but we're not always giving feelings. And so we need to make sure we are doing that. So your leaders are going to want to know, are our employees more engaged because of the recognition that they're feeling? And they're going to want to know whether um, retention, whether we have good retention because of how people are feeling recognized and appreciated. And they also want to know the business impact. And this is something we need to keep in mind because not all uh, levels of growth, progress, and development can be monetized and turned into a dollar figure but it can certainly uh, make an impact. And so when we give great recognition, when recognition is being given well within an organization, you're going to find that the atmosphere, the camaraderie, the engagement creates a productive workforce. It's a, a more collaborative kind of working environment. We certainly know that whatever metrics, whatever outputs that you have within your organization, service-wise, uh, deliverables as far as productivity and goods and services, all those thing, get, get, things get improved when we're giving recognition. So there is an impact that can be measured. You need to show your leaders what those kind of levels of impact are. What are the results? Uh, do we have a safer workplace, for example, because we're recognizing safe practices going on within the organization. So these are some of the bottom line things. And of course, you know, I, think, I think every leader wants to know, is there a return on investment from recognition? And this can be proved. Uh, you, can, you can actually monetize a lot of measures that you have. So retention, for example, engagement. These things can be monetized that when, you know, certain levels of engagement are achieved, then it produces certain, you know, dollar outputs. So your job is to look at things that how recognition might improve retention, for example. And, you know, we could look at nursing and we can say that, you know, 20% of their salary is an indication of how much it costs to hire a new employee, train a new employee into the healthcare system. And so if we have a certain percentage of retention, we know that it, it, it costs us a certain amount of money. Now we ins institute a new recognition program a new recognition practice with our nurses, for example. And we make sure that we're acknowledging them properly, effectively, and we improve the retention. And so we show that the dollar amount that's been saved by recognizing them and the cost of the recognition program, we can now create a cost benefit analysis that shows that we've made a difference. And all you have to do is change that ratio, the cost benefit ratio, uh, to, times it by 100 and you've got the ROI percentage, for example. So you can really prove these things. Show them that there's a people impact, show them there's a business impact from recognition and where possible, use the monetization figures that you can to demonstrate that there is a return on investment. Uh, of recognition. Very, very powerful. All right, so point number two, what, what's, what do employees benefit from recognition? Well, I kind of got these labeled under these three areas. I think number one is they're appropriately appreciated and they get positive feedback. It's interesting when we give feedback and recognition using what I've termed as a two-part specificity rule with telling them specifically the actions that they've done and specifically the impact that they've made. Those kind of wording around the feedback and the recognition actually uh, make a cognitive effect. They affect us emotionally from the description of the impact and they describe us 
uh, they affect us from the more quantitative side when we actually are specific with the kind of feedback and recognition that we give. I think we need to give more words of appreciation, whether that be face-to-face, -face, whether that be through text, through email, e-cards, video, what, however we can do it, the more we can express that, the more people feel appreciated. Employees want to know that we have care and concern for them. And when we demonstrate that, there has been plenty of evidence to show that that care and concern impacts how employees feel loyalty towards the company. These are the things your leaders want to know. And they also need to know about what happens when they are respectfully recognizing employees. Leaders need to know that when they pass by an employee in the hallway, that they need to acknowledge that junior employee just as much as they do a colleague from the C-suite. They need to be respectful. Respect always underlies all great recognition. They need to know that that's important and that employees, while they don't necessarily associate with senior leaders all the time, they need to know that they can trust them. They can need to know that they will be acknowledged by a leader when they have done some great things. So we need to know the preferences of our employees for recognition. You need to know and your leaders need to know who likes private recognition and who likes public recognition. They should not expect, as many leaders do tend to do, they, they think that everyone loves the limelight. They think that everybody should come up front on stage to receive perhaps an award that they've merited. So we need to show our leaders the importance of giving meaningful and specific recognition, that it needs to be delivered in the right way. And while we certainly know that when we appreciate uh, employees, uh, we can appreciate the effort. It's also important that, uh, whoops, it's gone too fast here, that we recognize the doing. A lot of employees tell me they, they know they get rewarded or recognized when a project is completed or a task is done, but they wanna know how they're doing along the way. Sometimes those projects and tasks might take months to get completed. We don't want to be recognizing them two or three months down the road. We need to be recognizing the ongoing work, the doing that's going on. And, um, and then with rewards, which kind of get lumped into recognition, I always like to say, you know, we recognize people uh, and we can reward the, the actual things that are done when results are produced. But I think it's important to combine both. And when you give a reward, you always accompany it with recognition. So you have to make sure though, that when you're giving rewards, that you follow fair practices and equity, uh, make sure that the leader knows that rewards are aligned with specific performance criteria. You can't just dish out rewards willy nilly and just because something happened that was great but what level of reward whether that be points whether that be cash gift cards you can create different levels of the value of the reward according to the value of the effort reward results that were achieved so that's why you need to create various criteria levels to kind of show managers and leaders what that kind of performance level merits as far as a reward. So that people are more consistent rather than having, you know, one manager or leader over here giving a certain value of a reward and another manager giving a far less or far greater reward amount. So choose your reward vehicles carefully. Each industry, I think workplace is gonna find whether it be points, gift cards, cash, whatever is the right tangible or experiential reward that might be given. You always have to be mindful that rewards are taxable 
but you reward results. That's the key you need to remember here. So I think if you show your leaders how appreciation, recognition, and rewards benefit your employees, I think they will better see the big picture of how they can use recognition and rewards within the company. And I think that's very important to show them uh, those benefits. Now, another thing they're going to ask you is they want to know how soon can they get results from your recognition and reward programs. And I want you to know that there are different time levels. So recognition practices are the more face-to-face -face or personal one-on-one -on -one kind of encounters or experiences that you can have. These are the attaboys, girls, the pats on the back, the high fives, as well as the kind of e-cards, written cards, personal interactions that you can have. And th these kind of practices are cultural practices. They, they take time to get everybody on board to, to learn how to give recognition the right way. And you have to make sure that you have a foundation of re respect. A respect always comes first to value anything. Then you have to show trust uh, that people can believe, you know, the expressions of recognition or actions that you might demonstrate uh, are real. And then you have to do those actions consistently. And when you're consistent, then people start to believe and, and value this recognition that might not have been happening before, but now is meaningful. So with those kind of recognition practices, any kind of cultural practices, it takes at least a year or two for recognition practices to have any meaning and depth to them. It can take two or three years sometimes. But I think if people can sh see that you're sincere and this is authentic, this is, this is not a one-off, this is not a you know, flavor of the month that people get concerned about, then I think you could start taking, uh, seeing some, some roots and some benefits in a year or two as a minimum. Uh, so you can tell your leader that at least a year or two, this is doing the practices. Now, what about your recognition programs? Well, they are going to take maybe anywhere from three months of data to kind of show that you're making a difference. So it's going to take at least a, one quarter, maybe two for you to be able to demonstrate to your leader that your recognition programs are making any gains or benefits. Recognition programs produce recognition outputs, whether it be you know, the usage of your program, how many e-cards you send, how many statements are made on a social recognition program, how many nominations were given to an employee. You can pull reports that show who's recognizing who and which employees have been recognized or not recognized to know whether you're making any significant gains with using your programs. So these are the kinds of things that you need to do, but notice you have to spell out to your leader why things take as long as they do. You need enough usage of your programs to produce the data, to produce the reports that can show the benefits and gains that have been made. Now, there is another metric that I think is also very important, and that is the perception that your leader has, or rather that your employees and managers have um, of your leader. So we need to make sure that they're good at giving recognition. And this is a qualitative measure. Managers and leaders can think, well, I'm great at giving recognition, but then their employees come in and say, uh -uh, not so good because they may be using the program, but when they are interacting with employees face to face, ah, uh, they're lousy. They may not, they may ignore that employee coming down the hallway, not know an employee's name, uh, be all smiles when they're giving an award presentation, but not respect and value that employee off the stage. 
So again, we can use various pulse surveys and that we have at Rideau, for example, and other survey tools to be able to get at the qualitative measure of recognition. And again, you need at least a quarter of data, maybe two at the most, to really start to see the perceptions that managers have of themselves and employees have of their managers. And now we can combine this data with the program usage, with your other measures, such as an employee engagement surveys, and be able to show the correlation between uh, these kind of recognition measures and your engagement and your performance metrics. Now, when you correlate that, now we can start to produce these kind of great results, but it takes a good quarter or two uh, for the programmatic offerings measures, and it takes a good year or two for the actual practices to kind of correlate with your engagement surveys and prove that recognition uh, is making a difference. All right, so we've talked about some of these areas that your leaders are going to know or want to know, and we need to be able to provide them those kind of information, data points, insights. But what are some tools for you to help your leaders? And I think this is important. I think it's important because you need to know what you can do to prepare for your leaders. And the one idea I'd like to suggest is actually create a senior leader persona, kind of a profile of your leaders. Uh, hopefully you have one leader in particular who is the champion of, for recognition, who is the sponsor of recognition at the C-suite table. And you need to know what is their attitude towards recognition? Do they hold it in a high regard? Are they positive? Uh, do they see and know the benefits that recognition produces for employees and for business? Do they know that it's a driver of recognition and engagement rather? And then you need to know what your leader's strengths are. Are they exemplary? Do they regularly give recognition? Are they using your recognition programs online? Are they initiating comments? Are they adding to people's recognition of employees? Do they take time out to write thank you cards or notes of commendation on a regular basis? Do they know the employees well? And or are they finding out information from you or from HR about those employees where they can add comments to and, and add you know, feedback to people? Uh, stop them in the hallway, make the walk arounds and add positive comments. So you need to kind of know what their strengths are with recognition. And what are the perceptions, perceptions of that leader? Do employees trust and respect their leaders? Do they value the recognition they receive from them? Do they want them to be present? Uh, at award events and ceremonies. Just knowing this insight gives you a feel for the leader and it might give you a strategy for working with them where they create a kind of a recognition action plan or where you might provide them with some coaching on how they're coming across because if they're not doing so well, they know they want to improve. So there's very few mean leaders and leaders are great leaders in particular are good at the business and they're good with people. It's both. It's not a one or the other. Great leaders are great at running the business, great at understanding people and they want to do good. Now, I think it's also important for you as a tool to help your leaders know more and become great at recognition is to connect recognition to your business strategy. So this requires you to have a recognition strategy first. Work with your leaders, work with your managers, work with your team on recognition to identify what the purpose and philosophy of recognition is 
for your organization. And then it requires you to create a recognition plan to kind of address the gaps and needs that you have and create some goals with outputs to see how you can improve recognition within your organization and then align it with the business strategy. So then there's a people strategy that your organization probably has looking at the talent management. And then you can see how you can integrate recognition into the employee career path, whether it be onboarding or the various milestones, uh, going above and beyond, achieving goals, um, the various milestones, of course, that they achieve and allow recognition to uh, drive employee engagement. Show your leaders how you can help do that with your recognition programs and the learning of how to give recognition more effectively can drive and support the people strategy. And then, of course, it's aligning recognition with the people strategy. World at Work in their 2019 employee, uh, well, Trends in Employee Recognition survey found that only 49% of organizations had a recognition strategy. But of those 49%, 97% of those organizations that had a recognition strategy were aligned with the business strategy because Recognition is not just a feel good experience or program. It's a strategy that can be leveraged to drive performance and business and profits. So when you know the business strategy, you can align recognition with some of the initiatives and strategies that are on the business strategy. That's why you need to understand what the financial goals are and show how recognition can be a driver of results. It's phenomenal, it really is. And that's how I think you really get recognition on the radar screen of your senior leaders when you align recognition with the business strategy. So I think it's also important that you learn how to show how recognition is a driver. Recognition drives positive relationships. It drives the positive relationship strength uh, with leaders and managers, employees to managers to leaders. And you need to make sure that the values of trust, respect, and openness are always there. And you can use recognition to recognize people who are respecting others, demonstrating trust, are open and whatever your organizational values are drive the reinforcement of living those values by recognizing people when they live them it's important to show how people and leaders are great listeners and observers of amazing work you love the whole tsa announcement that when you see something say something so recognize people when you see great things going on and work on truly caring about people have your managers and leaders receive the education and training they need to show care and concern uh, for their employees for their welfare when we do this when we have this positive relationship between managers and employees we can't help but be natural recognizers we become we become great recognizers when we do this many organizations are saying that recognition drives engagement and i know ultimately it does but i want you to think about recognition being a driver of positive relationships first because it's the positive relationship strength that we have managers to employees leaders to managers and employees that is what improves engagement so when recognition improves we improve the positive relationship strength when positive relationship strength improves we improve employee engagement and it is that positive relationship strength improving engagement that drives results and i'm very excited to be able to tell you that in uh, the aon survey 
uh, that they did on employee engagement showed that recognition and rewards was the strongest driver of employee engagement two years in a row. In fact, they were even able to separate out recognition uh, for contributions made beyond pay because, again, it gets blurry. In fact, they even use rewards and recognition. I always say it's important to use recognition and rewards because when you put recognition first, we always recognize people. We don't always have to reward. But when we do it in that order, that's the way we can really drive results. So they found that recognition alone was the single most powerful driver of engagement beyond pay and benefits. So this is what we need to work towards. And this is how you need to show your leaders how recognition is a driver of results, exciting things. And I think it's also important for you as a tool, a strategy to leverage recognition goals. Uh, it's all, all right to have a recognition strategy. It's important to have a plan. And in that plan, you must have recognition goals. So you need to ensure that you are always recognizing exemplary living of your corporate values, your organizational values. You need to embed recognition into your culture so it becomes a way of life and that recognition occurs along that pathway, that journey of each employee. Make recognition a way of life, not just a program. And then it's important to have a goal to recognize effort and progress. Not everyone is in the limelight. Not everyone is the top salesperson. Not everyone is outstanding, but every single person is, is making some effort, some contribution that we need to acknowledge and recognize. So give positive feedback, recognize the progress and help employees know where they stand uh, in, in the spectrum of the organization. And then of course, you have a goal for whatever the productivity and results are, you continually measure performance. Look for the productivity measures, look for the retention measures that you have, and look for ways that recognition can help lift those performance measures, retain more employees, and keep them over the long term. And then when major achievements are, uh, are reached and, uh, uh, and every time someone goes above and beyond, you wanna make sure that your recognition practices, your recognition programs are right there, helping managers and leaders recognize your employees for what they are doing and the results that have been achieved. So this is exciting times. These are the tools you can use to leverage and help your leaders know the things that they want to know. And I've always said this, that if you help your leaders understand the people and business impact of employee recognition, they will lead the way with recognition for you. So keep that in mind. I hope this helps you as you prepare your leaders, the great leaders that we have running things right now, especially. And uh, I think we're time now for some questions, Tommy Lee, and some thoughts that maybe individuals have submitted and expressed. Yeah, um, perhaps people have a little more time because we've got questions. So perhaps uh, there's a few people working at home and tuning in. Um, Roy John says, uh, uh, ROI is my number one question. When you compare to other strategic areas, engagement is perceived as wishy-washy. Mm. So maybe, maybe Thanks, saying the ROI on engagement, John. I hope I'm I'm reading this question right. Um, is perceived as wishy-washy. Sure, uh, and, and we probably we've probably heard that many. You've probably heard that many many times. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the one thing is that when I hear that kind of statement, there are I, I'm interpreting, of mm -hmm. course. Number one, I would say engagement surveys can be very powerful if they are used properly. Okay. Number one, are we asking the right questions? Too often we just make a general statement about 
recognition perhaps. And two, is it just organizational or are we drilling down to the managers? Are we able to show which departments, which managers are giving recognition better or not, depending on the engagement survey? And then thirdly is, are we really acting on those engagement surveys? No survey should be conducted that doesn't have an action plan, that doesn't have an intent to change something. So when those will be some interesting points to look at for John to examine to see if the engagement surveys are being used properly. Depth of questions, are we drilling down that we can kind of say which managers are doing well with recognition or not? You can now correlate with their performance measures as well. And then do we have an action plan to actually improve and change things after the engagement surveys is done? That's just a comment on the engagement survey. Mm -hmm. Then there's the whole issue of business impact. You and I know that there are certain managers and leaders who are better at giving recognition than not. Mm -hmm. And we can usually correlate just those indicators alone, qualitative indicators, along with the quantitative measures of where business is improved. How, who are producing more? Who, which teams are, are doing well? Even if we don't drill down too, too much further than that, we can show those managers who are giving better recognition along with the business impact that they're making. I always like to talk about the kind of a, a three a ROI to the power of three. It's like, are, are we having any ROI on our people? Are we having any ROI on the impact? And are, are we having any ROI on our investment in recognition programs. So we need to kind of look at the broader spectrum and, and, and hopefully we can monetize certain measures, as I indicated earlier in the webinar, that we can truly produce uh, a return on investment. Not every number produces uh, an ROI because it needs to be monetary or monetized, but we can produce business impact. Excellent, excellent. Let me ask you this question, Roy. I don't think I've ever asked you, and I honestly don't know the answer to it. What, how, what do you feel about surveys or, or the fluidity of surveys? You know, I think a lot of times um, I've been in this role where I have wanted the same data so I could watch those points rise or fall, knowing I've asked the employees the same exact questions each time. But sometimes things change, and that question is no longer relevant. What is your advice to us? You mentioned surveys and-, and Yes, and yeah, that's a good point. Overall I think, advice. Yeah, number one, I think there's some need uh, over time to do an adjustment of the questions. Mm -hmm. And with that adjustment, you really need to think hard about the wording, the kind of questions you need to ask across all areas, not just recognition, of course. And then keep that set of questions consistent for a period of three to five years. Okay. So you're right that we, we want to kind of measure gains, progress, decline over time. That's why we often don't want to change things. Another point is to use the kind of what's used, the terminology that's used is pulse surveys, where we might want to drill down and just ask, you know, a few questions on one element of the engagement survey. Okay. That way we do that on a more frequent basis throughout a year and allows us to get more refined data that we might still keep the regular once a year or biannual uh, engagement survey, but have pulse check surveys on various elements that we want to dive down, dig deeper, find out what's going on. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Melissa says, uh, People impact and ROI are important, but business impact is the most important. Uh, it's just a comment, I guess, yeah. uh, to your first. Um, well, and you can't get the business impact without the people or the <laughs> ROI. So, and, and, and again, that, we're looking at your leaders. You know, you're, they're going to be more focused on thinking ROI first of all. Absolutely, yeah. Sometimes you have to educate them on business impact where you can't produce produce an ROI. Yeah. 
Uh, CJ says, can it really be proven? I'm assuming talking about ROI. Oh yeah, ROI is the only, only as good as the data and data can be mani manipulated, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where employee input data is very important. So the reason why I think that's important is that uh, I'm going to go along with the theme that CJ has said about the manipulation. You might have, for example, a recognition program where a manager, all managers get X amount of points, say a thousand points a quarter or a month, whatever. Mm -hmm. And manager A is a wise steward of their thousand points and they say, well, Tommy Lee uh, did this, I'm gonna send 100 points over there. Uh, Rhea did this over here, I'm gonna send 500 points over here because of what they did. It was a higher level performance and I feel they deserve that. And they use their points you know, throughout the month. They may not use all of them, they may. And then you get manager B who says, oh my goodness, it's the end of the month Right. I know my director is going to be on my head to find out why I didn't use my points. So now I click, 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 send out 10 times 100 points. Whew, I, I've used up my thousand points. Now we ask the employees and we survey them maybe on a monthly, quarterly basis, whatever. And we say, how good is your manager at recognizing you? And employee A shines high scores but employee b they say you know what he never says anything <laughs> anything during the week month whatever never write me and all of a sudden boom i get rewarded and i know it doesn't mean anything right so in that sense manager b gets viewed as middle of the road or low as being a, a lousy manager of recognition i think it's the coupling of quantitative measures and qualitative measures that really becomes the truth indicator as to how good we are really doing with recognition. And to your point earlier, it has to be explained to your, um, if your leader doesn't know it, it has to be explained to them in that fashion. Uh, and if, and if you're, you're the leader and your people don't know to be explained to that in that fashion, fashion. it's gotta be totally transparent. Yes, um, totally. To, to, you know, to, to uh, just re you said earlier. Um, Raymond, any tips for rewards during COVID-19? And, you know, maybe this will be a future webinar topic. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it's definitely timely. Um, any, any tips for rewarding during COVID-19? No, I think this is where we have to tread carefully. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying we can't reward but my philosophy has always been recognized first and then reward and and that may be what raymond meant but that's yeah just and i don't know we don't know we don't know uh, raymond, yeah raymond may add to this uh, <laughs> but it's important to i think there's lots more recognition opportunities than we ever had possible because we are so having to need to connect with people and i think that's important so we need to make sure that we're not only just relying on email that we're picking up the phone, that we're using whatever video conferencing tools are appropriate so that we're connecting more often because everyone's gonna be more in isolation. I think a lot of us have found out, now I've been working out of a home office uh, for 20 plus years. Right. But there are some new people who are doing this for the very first time. And we, we need to know what everyone is doing so I think we need to share what we're working on so that we can recognize that. We need to make sure that we're stopping at the beginning of the day, before we open up emails, send out a gratitude thought to someone. Uh, if you haven't said anything during the day, make sure at the end of the day, you're stopping to thank those who have sent you, you know, various outputs, results, reports, whatever. For those of us, that's the kind of office environment I think there are still going to be, I know, uh, manufacturing, there's still some manufacturing going on. Mm -hmm. uh, they're having to, you know, it's, it's, the shifts are having to be cut in half or whatever, either for monetary reasons or for people for distancing point of view. 
we need to be acknowledging them, whether it's a pre-shift meeting, whether it's a, a video, whether it's a, uh, an email, we've got to be sending out more notes and comments. As for rewards, I would say, and I was just reading something from OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Association, and there are various levels of risk with different jobs that we have. Absolutely. Yep. So I see different levels of rewards commensurate with those levels of risk taking that's going on. But we've got to make sure we're recognizing, we've got to make sure that we're expressing our feelings, our gratitude. And then unfortunately, there's also the financial constraints that companies are going through. Yep. What can they afford? Is it more symbolic than it is uh, necessarily the equivalent, the monetarily equivalent for what someone's done? So there's no one answer. It's industry specific, it's financial resource specific, risk level appropriate. But bottom line, make sure you're recognizing and stopping to recognize, even spending more time to do the recognition even if you can or cannot reward them. You know what, I'm gonna do, uh, stop right here, Roy, and do a, a shameless plug for um, your uh, paper, which is available at Rito.com in, uh, in our Thought Leadership Library. If you go there, uh, all we ask is for your uh, email so you can register and you can download for free what to expect when managing your work uh, team you had mentioned that this is this is not new to you or but for a lot of people out there i would venture to say hundreds of thousands this is a new thing it's a very new thing and those 10 tips that you give are priceless uh even a couple of them i i, I had forgotten about because i don't manage a team on a regular basis uh but we're all just you know this is like new for a lot of us and the circumstances quite frankly are brand new for all of us so um i would uh, do a shameless plug for your for your free paper there oh, so, thank you full of some good information levi says um i suspect recognition will be even more important once we return to work from coronavirus i guess that was just more of a, a statement but yeah absolutely you know we're gonna uh, these companies are gonna have to get results from people who um may have lost a loved one may have done you know may have lost their job may have uh spouses lost their job you know there's a myriad of reasons why uh you know there will be to reward recognize engage our employees uh once we all return to work so just Absolutely. kind of piggybacking off of what raymond said i don't know if you have anything to add to that comment. no i think that's i think very true um lynette says uh there won't be benefits. Uh, does that mean there will won't be benefits uh, earlier than a year or two? Seems like that's a long tail. We're always running behind like a hamster in a wheel. Lots of effort, but not giving, uh, not going anywhere. Um, I know this. I know what Lynette is saying, and I, I was just trying to when any cultural change most of the researchers are saying it takes two to three years for a cultural change to happen. Okay. Yes, individual managers and their employees who are doing recognition right, they're going to speak more highly of that manager mm -hmm. much, quite quickly. If it's sincere, genuine, and consistently maintained, of course, the benefits are there. But as far as measuring across the entire organization, if you're looking at a cultural change where and I, I've seen organizations where recognition was rarely present, that's going to take a year or two. Okay. But individually, individual managers and their employees, they're going to notice sooner, of course. Okay. Does that matter on the size of the organization, Roy? You're right. A small organization is going to feel it better and quicker if it's happening. And a larger organization, you're always going to have that typical divisions, departments that are better than others. 
and it's not right. it's not carried over across the whole organization so yes that's that's a very valid point Thank you.